The Lumos Fluid Builder allows us to create websites that look amazing on any screen size. It can be applied to spacing, typography, or any size on our site, and it can work with any framework that uses Webflow variables. By default, the larger sizes shrink more and the smaller sizes shrink less, and in most cases, it removes the need for breakpoint-based sizing. Normally with Fluid Designs and Webflow, everything shrinks at the same rate. So the smaller elements become too small and the larger elements aren't small enough, we still have to manually reduce them across breakpoints. But the Lumos Fluid Builder ensures smaller sizes don't shrink too much and the larger a size becomes, the more it shrinks. This often removes the need for breakpoint-based sizing. Here we have a Fluid font size that will reduce all the way down and an adaptive font size that will only reduce on each breakpoint. A common problem with breakpoint based sizing is things feel crowded and out of place right before we switch into the next breakpoint. Because we're not really optimizing this font size for every screen size, it only looks the way we want when we freshly cross into a new breakpoint. With fluid font sizes, each time the user zooms, the font size gets larger, all the way up. But with adaptive font sizes, whenever we cross into a breakpoint, the font size actually decreases from an increased zoom, which could confuse the user. In the Fluid Builder, we have a Webflow Container Max width and a Figma Design width. In most cases, these two values will be set to the same thing. So in Figma, in this case, our design was created at 1440 pixels wide. If we divide that by 16, that's a 90 rim width. And in Webflow, we went ahead and set our Container Max width to also be 90 rim. But what if even though our design was created at 1440, we actually want it to scale up all the way to 1920? Well, in that case, we would set our Webflow container max width to be larger than our design width. So I'll go with 120 rim, which is 1920 pixels. And then we would just adjust the Fluid Builder. So our Webflow container max width is 120 rim. Our Figma design was created at 90 rim. And we'll have all of our sizes scale down until 320 pixel screen width or 20 rim. And so if we have a H1 font size, and let's say it was set to 5 rim in our design, then it's going to be 5 rim at our design width, 1440 pixels. But above that design width, it's going to scale up to be larger than 5 rim, leading all the way up to our container max width in Webflow. And right here at this minimum scaling size of a 320 pixel screen width, this H1 font size will scale all the way down to 3 rim. Now, if our Webflow container max width matches our design width, then this size will never become larger than 5 rim. At the Webflow container max width, it'll just stop scaling up and it'll scale down to 3 rim at the smallest possible screen size. In Lumos, there's a size variable folder that holds all the core sizes we use throughout our site. We apply these to spacing, font sizes, icon heights, really anything on the site. So if we make these core sizes fluid, then everything on the site referencing these will also become fluid. If we take a look at any of our different heading styles, like maybe this H4, notice how it's just referencing a size from that size variable folder. So we could choose any of these sizes, and if the core sizes are fluid, then all the typography will also be fluid. Whenever we first load up the Fluid Builder, it has all of those size variables in there by default, along with their recommended desktop and mobile sizes. If you're using your own framework, you can rename these variables to anything you'd like and adjust the desktop and mobile values freely. We can also override individual values. So here we have our left and right section padding and in Webflow, that's set to one of our sizes from this size folder. But the value we set here doesn't matter because we're going to override this variable with the Fluid Builder. So we would just want to copy its variable name and then we could set a custom desktop and mobile size for that. So in this case, our default three rim size wasn't shrinking enough for our left and right section spacing. So we set it to three rim on desktop and one rim on mobile specific to this left and right section space. Now here we're getting this red warning label. And that's because for any font size to be accessible, the user needs to be able to double its size when they reach a 500% zoom. And because this size is shrinking so much, when they reach that max zoom, it's still not uh, double its original size. Now this is perfectly fine here because we're just using it for padding, but for any variable that might be used for font size, we wanna make sure we're not shrinking it too much where it doesn't meet that requirement. 
And also another issue we can run into is say we have our max screen size, so everything's stopping scaling up at 90 rim, and it scales all the way down to a screen size of 20 rim. Well, if these values are too close to each other, we get these yellow warning labels instead. And that means all these sizes technically pass accessibility. If you zoom them up enough, they will double from their original value. But on first couple of zooms, they'll actually appear to decrease instead of increase, which isn't the best user experience. So anytime we have a rim value in our calc that is either zero rim or a negative rim value, then on first couple of zooms, it's either not going to appear to increase at all, or it'll actually appear to decrease, which isn't what we want. We want to make sure we always have a positive rim value inside of this. So the way to handle that is just make sure that these sizes aren't too close to each other. If we push them farther apart, then every time we zoom, these sizes will appear to increase. Now, another great option we have in the Fluid Builder is the option to use type scales. So here we have a group for all of our heading font sizes. And with type scales, instead of applying a font size for each heading style individually, we would set one font size, like maybe on this H6, and all other headings would be based on the size of this H6. So here we can set the H6 font size on desktop and the H6 font size on mobile. And a lot of times I like to keep it the same so the small size doesn't shrink too small. But then we can define the type scale. So this is the desktop scale. And if we have a smaller number here, notice all these sizes are closer together. And with a larger value, we'll notice they're further apart because each size is incrementing based on this scale here. So we can set our desktop scale here. And then on mobile, instead of reducing the H6 font size, we can just tighten up the type scale to bring all of these sizes closer together. And this gives us much more control over how these sizes respond across breakpoints and really making sure our large sizes aren't too large on those smaller screen sizes. Now, if we add an extra size here, like maybe we'll call this display large font size. And in that case, we'll notice that it's actually smaller than the H6 because of where we placed it on the type scale. But if we just drag this up to the top, now we'll notice it's larger than that display just based on where it is in that scale. We can also choose what we want to anchor from. So maybe instead of setting the H6 font size, we might want to set the H3 font size and have all of these other sizes increase based off that H3 font size and have these ones decrease based on that. The only problem that we'll run into here is what actually happens is this size is larger on desktop, smaller on mobile. Same for this one, larger on desktop, smaller on mobile. But anything below this anchored size here, you'll notice it's uh, one size on desktop and it actually becomes larger on mobile. So instead of getting smaller, these other sizes become larger as they start to level out, which isn't what we want here. So I always recommend basing your type scale off the smallest size in the list. In this case, it's going to be our H6. And that way we're making sure that all the sizes become smaller on mobile, not larger. And we can have a second group for all of our body copy related variables. So here we have our main uh, font size that's used on the body. We have a font size small and a font size large for body copy. And that way we can control the scale for these separately, making sure still that this large one doesn't become uh, larger than our H6. So we can control that if we want from here. Um, and that way we can just really narrow these in. Now you'll notice I even have an empty variable in here, and that's so this uh, large size actually skips a scale. That way it becomes much larger than our base font size here. So if we want a variable to skip a scale and not always increment by one times the type scale, we can just add in an empty variable here and it'll skip a level and make this large font size even larger. Now, when it comes time to apply all of this, all we need to do is copy this code, head over to Webflow, and we'll open up our custom code embed. We'll open up our responsive embed. And the only thing in that responsive embed was all of the adaptive breakpoint-based sizing. So we don't need any of that. We can delete it all and just replace it with all of our Fluid code instead. And now everything becomes Fluid. And if we ever want to change our settings, this URL has all of our settings saved here. So if we revisit it, it'll reopen the Fluid Builder with all of the last settings that we applied here so we can make tweaks. Now, once we have this saved and applied, we'll notice that everything is just Fluid all the way down and that's good to go. All of our spacing, our font sizes, everything. 
Now, say our design wasn't created with a type scale in mind. All we need to do is delete these heading type scales and we can delete these body copy type scales. And that way these font sizes aren't being overridden. And then when we do that, the font sizes will just be defined uh, regularly from the variable panel. So if we open up our variables right here, and we had to maybe like in a display font size. So here we'll just be selecting from the fluid sizes to apply our font size if we're not using type scales. So if the designer chose a six rim font size for their display, we would just click that here and not worry about type scales if the design wasn't created with type scales in mind. And that wraps up how to use the fluid builder.